Is your overall energy expenditure basically fixed and nothing you can do is going to change it? That could be an extreme interpretation of a new paper that looks back at the Biggest Loser studies and also another study from hunter-gatherer societies, which kind of suggests that as physical activity goes up, resting metabolic rate goes down, keeping your total energy expenditure equivalent and without changing. So does this mean that basically physical activity has nothing to do with weight loss? Possible, but I think we need to kind of look at this from a different perspective. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. This is an interesting subject that, that I, I find really fascinating because it's the old question of, you know, what what's, are the important inputs for healthy weight loss? Is it all about calorie restriction and has nothing to do with physical activity? Or is it all about physical activity? Doesn't matter what you eat. I think we kind of proved that one to be false a long time ago. Or is it this combination of the two that really matters? Well, a new brief paper by Kevin Hall kind of raises some questions about this. The paper published in Obesity uh, is titled The Energy Compensation and Metabolic Adaptation, The Biggest Loser Study Reinterpreted. Now, as a reminder, Kevin Hall published a study a number of years ago, looking at the Biggest Loser TV show, looking at the contestants in this TV show and following them up six years after the TV show. And sort of the big conclusion was even six years after the TV show, which had sort of extreme caloric deprivation and extreme exercise, uh, like three hours a day and 65% caloric restriction, that even six years later, when they resumed a more sustainable lifestyle, their resting metabolic rate was still between 500 and 700 calories per day lower than it was during when they started. Um, and a lot of them had rega regained a, a significant amount of the weight. So one of the interpretations was this type of lifestyle wrecks your metabolism, quote unquote, wrecks or ruins your metabolism. And even six years later, it is still quote unquote ruined. Well, what Kevin does in this new paper is sort of says, well, maybe we need to reassess this from a different perspective. And he brings in uh, Herman Ponzer and his work with the hunter-gatherer population. So let's review his paper for a minute. Ponzer's paper basically looked at the total energy expenditure. Ponzer's paper was published in 2012 in PLOS1 called Hunter-Gatherer Energetics and Human Obesity. And what he did was basically he looked at modern, you know, westernized sedentary individuals. He looked at the hunter-gatherer Hadza community who are, you know, basically walking all day long and physically active all day long and very lean. And he looked at a farming population, which I thought was really interesting and probably the most interesting data. But some of the baselines, um, the Hadza women and men body fat percentage was 21 for women and 13% for men, whereas for the Westerners, 38% body fat for women and 22 for men, whereas the farmers were 27% body fat for women and 16% for men. Despite this increase in physical activity from the Hadza, the overall energy expenditure as corrected for body mass was exactly the same between the sedentary Westerners and the very active Hadza. So the interpretation was sort of uh, physical activity doesn't increase your overall daily energy expenditure because your resting metabolic rate reduces according to your increased physical activity. So the more active you are, the lower your resting metabolic rate is, which is interesting because you can say, well, how, how do you lower your resting metabolic rate just by being physically active? And he proposed maybe it's because of decreased inflammation, you're just sort of healthier, and that, the mechanism is unproven but the association was there. But one interesting thing that he noticed in the farming community was that for those individuals, their total energy expenditure was higher than expected. So even though the Hadza and the Westerners were basically equivalent, the farming were higher when, when corrected for uh, body composition. So I think that's an important caveat. Now, hang on to that because I'm going to come back to it. So the overall interpretation is basically, it doesn't matter what you do, it's all about what you eat. And look, I think it's clear that what you eat is very important. Not only how much, but the types of food you eat, what it does to your, your hormonal regulation, your insulin levels, your hunger, and to your overall caloric intake. That's very clear. 
But here's the other thing. Does it mean that physical activity has no input when it comes to maintaining weight loss or your resting metabolic rate? And here where we, here's where we can't just consider physical activity all as one thing. So I think one thing we can interpret, and again, the papers didn't look at this, but one thing we can say is the Hadza had predominantly cardio aerobic type activity. They were walking the vast majority of their physical activity. Farmers, when I think of farmers, I think of more physical activity in terms of carrying things, moving things, um, you know, bending, squatting, uh, and definitely some walking, but maybe a little more resistance. Actually, definitely more resistance, I would say, during their day than just, than just walking. And that's what I think is the big difference. Because when you look at the science and the literature for intervention studies, if you look at aerobic exercise, it doesn't tend to increase resting metabolic rate. But when you look at resistance training, it does. Now the question is, can you decouple resistance training from improved fat-free mass or improved lean body mass? And, and I'm not sure you exactly can, um, but does it matter? And, and here's the, what I think is the practical take home. It doesn't matter. What matters is you want to have lean body mass. You want to have muscle mass to improve your resting metabolic rate. And how do you do that? You do that by eating enough protein and getting resistance training. Now, depending on where you're at, that may just mean some simple body weight exercises, or it may mean going to the gym and, and pumping weights, but that depends on your baseline. It doesn't have to be in the gym pumping weights if you're new to resistance training. But the key is getting enough protein and getting resistance training is going to improve your lean mass, which is going to improve your resting metabolic rate. And this is a very important differentiation because if our conclusion is it's all about what you eat and has nothing to do with your exercise, then any form of caloric restriction and weight loss should not lower your resting metabolic rate. But that's exactly the opposite of what we see. We see severe caloric restriction in the absence of physical activity lower resting metabolic rate. And that is not what you want for healthy, sustainable weight loss, because that's going to make maintaining your weight loss much more concerning. So that's why I think the best combination is a diet that allows you to sustainably reduce your calories in a way that's going to improve your food-related hormones, but is also gonna supply you with adequate amount of protein so that you can perform resistance training and add to your lean body mass, which is going to maintain or improve your resting metabolic rate and increase your total energy expenditure while still allowing you to lose weight in a healthy, sustainable way. So I think what uh, Kevin Hall and Herman Ponser have done certainly contributes to helping us understand energy expenditure. But I think we need to take it that next step and say, look, we can't look at all physical activity the same. We have to separate cardio and resistance training. We have to separate physical activity that builds lean mass and physical activity that just burns calories. Those are very different. And I guess the other point here is, is not to say that means cardio exercise has no role in health. This is specifically, specifically looking at resting metabolic rate. When it comes to cardiorespiratory fitness and other benefits that you can get from cardio exercise, absolutely still has a role. But when we're talking about weight, when we're talking about energy expenditure, that's where exercise that builds lean, lean mass and muscle mass is much more important. So protein, resistance training, and a healthy, sustainable caloric reduction. That's the secret to long-term weight loss, all right? I hope this was helpful. We have resources at dietdoctor.com focusing on healthy weight loss because not all weight loss is the same. We want to focus on healthy weight loss, and this is a big part of it, protecting your resting metabolic rate, protecting your lean mass. Um, so please click the thumbs up and subscribe if this was helpful, and you'll get updates on all our Diet Doctor news on YouTube here in the future. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you.